Today, I'm gonna to be showing you the first 10 things you should do if you've just got your brand new Samsung Galaxy S24, S24 Plus, or S24 Ultra. Now, these tips and tricks are gonna help you get the most out of this phone's features, battery life, as well as performance. Let's dive in. All right, so first I wanna show you how to access one-handed mode on your S24. Now, this feature, even on the smaller S24, is still a really useful thing to have. I find if you're walking down a busy road with, uh, with a coffee in one hand and you're trying to respond to a message, it can be hard to access the other end of the keyboard uh, or say to reach the top corner of your display. So one-handed mode makes this much easier. Uh, first, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this feature is activated. So to do this, uh, we're gonna go into settings and then we're gonna scroll down to where we find advanced features tap on that, and then here you'll find one-handed mode and make sure that that feature is turned on. Now to activate one-handed mode, you're gonna do a slight swipe down along the bottom of the display. So just like that, and as you can see, that's then gonna shrink the display essentially by 50%, bringing everything closer to the bottom, again, making it much easier to reach those upper corners or the edge of the screen. Uh, you can also move it to the left or right, depending on uh, whether you're left or right-handed. I'm left-handed, so I prefer it on the left side. Uh, you can even move the window up or down if you choose to. Uh, not sure why move it up, but you can. Uh, I'd rather have it further below to make it easier to access. Uh, so again, really useful feature. Uh, and then to deactivate or to get out of one-handed mode, simply repeat the same gesture, a swipe going down along the display, and it will then expand again to full size. Next, I would say one of my all-time favorite features of Android and something I really miss on iPhone is having the ability to truly multitask running multiple apps at once on your phone. Really, really great. Uh, but there's also a way to actually save an instance of two apps right on your home screen. You can see that with this icon here, anytime I tap it, a new YouTube window as well as a Chrome window will open in this exact uh, format every time I tap that icon. So let me show you how to save an app pair to your home screen. So what we're gonna do is first open up one app. So let's say, uh, the voice recorder app and then we're going to add in a new app via the edge panel so we're going to swipe to the right here and let's bring in uh, let's say notes go ahead and press and drag that either to the top or bottom let's put it to the bottom here and as you can see we're now running two apps now to save an app pair to your home screen you're going to tap on these little three dot menu that you find in the middle and then we're going to click on this little star icon and then tap home screen. And then we can also actually save it to the edge panel if we like. We'll look at the edge panel more in a sec. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and tap on the home screen. And then if we swipe down, as you can see, we now have a new icon here. You can see I have a few. And anytime I tap this, we're going to open up these two apps exactly the way I left it. You can also adjust this, of course, have one app be larger than the other, uh, or say change the orientation. You can swap them around uh, if you like as well, but it will remember exactly how you've set it up. So every time you tap that icon, it's going to bring back that same instance of those two apps. Super useful. All right, now this next one is going to be a little bit controversial. I know some people love the button layout here at the bottom with the back button and the home button. Personally, though, I love the navigation bar, and that's what you see right here. This to me is a much more seamless way of interacting with your phone. It's just more natural to use the swipe gestures, making it super easy. You can also quickly swipe between apps just by swiping along the bottom here of the display, as you can see, uh, super easy. And I especially like that it doesn't take up any screen space like the buttons would. So how do you change this? Well, to change this, uh, what you're gonna do is go into the settings app here, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and go into display, which you will find right here, and then tap on display, and then scroll down to where we find navigation bar. There we go. And here we can go ahead and change between the button layout as well as the swipe gestures. Again, I highly prefer the swipe gestures. It's just so fluid and seamless uh, and easy to use. But if you prefer the buttons, this is where you change it. Uh, but I recommend the swipe gestures. Next, I want to show you how to customize the side button, as this button is actually quite a powerful tool and a great way uh, to access certain system functions. So for example, you can see I have mine set up to activate the torch. I find this to be super useful. Uh, if say I'm looking for my keys in my bag or my shoes in a dark hall or something, uh, great to just physically double press this uh, tactile button to activate the torch. Of course, the, uh, the control here on the lock screen does work, but I find a physical button to be just that little bit more reliable uh, and also more satisfying to use. So I definitely recommend uh, uh, setting up the side button here to your uh, preferred function. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we go into the settings app and then we'll search for side button. There we go. So that's in advanced features. And here we can, first of all, you want to enable a double press and then you can choose what that will do. Now by default, it's going to launch the camera app, which is useful. You also have it set up your wallet. But if we tap the uh, settings icon here, 
we can actually set it to a specific app. So for example, uh, any application really on your phone, but also some functions like, for example, the translator, uh, Bixby, or the torch, which is what I have. So that's what I have selected there. Uh, we can also uh, modify what a press and hold will do. Now, by default, this is going to bring up Bixby. Now, Bixby is many things, but useful is not one of them. Uh, no, that's a bit mean. But I prefer to use the Google uh, Google Smart Assistant on my phone as opposed to Bixby. So personally, I have this set up, uh, set up to the power menu. I just find that more useful. Uh, it's also a good way to more quickly be able to access a emergency call should that ever be needed. Uh, of course, your medical details as well. So I prefer to set that to the power off menu. And this is where you customize the side button. And this brings us back to the edge panel. So we saw me use this uh, earlier in the video. I find this a super useful feature, I think really underrated as well here on uh, Samsung One UI. So let me show you how to set this up and then customize this. So uh, to do this, we're gonna go into settings and then we're gonna tap on display. And in here, we will scroll to where we find edge panel. So first you're gonna make sure that it is activated, but then if we tap into it, we can actually customize this really quite far. So first we can choose what we want to be inside the panel. So you can have any apps, you can have people. This is great as well if you wanna quickly reach a contact, uh, even certain widgets like your weather, uh, music playback. Personally though, I prefer to have apps primarily because it's just a super way to bring up a new application if I'm already in an app. So for example, I'm in settings right now, simply bring over the edge panel and I can drag in another app like you saw me do earlier or quickly switch between apps as well. So super useful to have. Um, now we can also customize the panel specifically. So if we go into the handle here, we can choose the position. So either on the left or right side. Now I'm left-handed, so I'll swipe with my thumb. So I prefer to be on the left. If you're right-handed, which you probably are, uh, you'd want it to be on the right side. Now you can also reposition the edge panel in terms of the heights. Now, my suggestion here is to have it raised a little bit from where your thumb would normally rest because swiping to the left here is also a great way to go back and you don't want to accidentally trigger the edge panel. So as you can see, I have mine set up to be a little bit higher than that as to not accidentally activate uh, the edge panel and only have it show when I want it to. And you can of course customize it even further. You can change the color, uh, transparency, even the size of it. Uh, so you can really customize this to your heart's content. I keep most of these settings the same. Uh, one thing I do change though, is the specific apps that I have shown in there. So if I tap on apps here, I can tap on edit, and then we can also drag and move or remove apps if we like. So we can add a couple more, uh, but then become a little wider. I prefer a more narrow look on my edge panel. So there we go, it won't take up uh, as much screen space. So as you can see, I keep it relatively slim and have my most used apps uh, available at all times. And then at the top here, uh, these will change dynamically depending on which apps you use to always have your recent stored at the top. Now, I want to pay some attention to the battery as I get a lot of questions about how to extend your battery life, um, battery health. Now, I want to take a look at battery health specifically as there's a really good battery protection uh, setting that Samsung has that you should, I think, activate on your phone uh, as, again, the better your battery health, the longer you preserve that, the better your battery life. So it's really worth doing. Uh, so to do this, we're going to go into settings and then we are going to scroll all the way down to where we find device care. There it is. And then we're going to tap on the battery. And in here, we have the option to turn on battery protection. So first, you're going to want to make sure that that is turned on. But then if we tap into battery protection, we'll have different layers of protection. Now, let me briefly explain what these bottom two do, as these are the most important. Um, so first is maximum. And this is for the true battery health preserving diehards out there. Uh, what this will essentially do is it's going to limit your battery capacity to 80%. So it'll let your phone charge all the way up to 80%, but not the remaining 20%. And what this is going to do is limit where on your battery over time. However, you will sacrifice 20% of your battery. And for me personally, that's not worth it. So therefore, I prefer to use the adaptive function. And it's sort of the middle ground between having no protection uh, and having that maximum protection. And what this is going to do is still give you access to your full battery capacity. So you're not sacrificing anything there. What it will do is it will sort of stagger your charging. So it's going to monitor and learn from your charging habits. So Let's say I plug my phone in at 11 p.m. at night and then unplug it at 7 a.m. Uh, in the morning. What it's going to do is at 11 p.m., it's first going to charge up to 80%, but then wait with the remaining 20% till closer when I wake up and unplug my phone. This more staggered uh, charging is going to limit the less in the charge speed, produce less heat, and therefore produce less wear on the battery. Heat is probably the biggest factor uh, when it comes to your battery, and we'll talk about that a little bit more next uh, when I talk about charging. But when it comes to the battery protection setting, make sure you have this on. And my suggestion uh, is to use the adaptive function as it really gives you the best of both.
So this setting is one great way to uh, limit the wear on your battery and help preserve battery health. But another great way to do this is, well, by deciding how you charge your phone as different charge habits will have different impacts on your battery. So for example, uh, wirelessly charging will produce significantly more heat than a wired connection. Therefore, wireless charging will cause more wear on your battery over time. And the same thing can be said for fast charging. So if you have a faster or higher watt charger, it will charge your phone faster, which again has its advantages. But when it comes to battery health, will cause more more wear on the battery. So if you're looking to preserve your battery health, my suggestion is to use a wired connection with a slower or lower watt charger. For example, a five watt or a 10 watt charger, as opposed to a faster 20, 25, 40, 50 watt charger uh, overnight. Now, of course, it doesn't mean you should never wirelessly charge or never fast charge, as I do think these features have their place. And there certainly are moments where uh, these do come in handy. So my suggestion is at night, which is when you charge your phone most often, use that wired connection with a lower watt charger as you don't need it to charge very fast. But then during the day, if you do need a quick top up, uh, don't hesitate about briefly charging. It won't immediately destroy your battery either. But as long as majority of the time you're using that wired connection with a lower watt charger, it will go a long way to preserving your battery health. Now I want to show you a couple of AI features that I think are most useful on the S24 line. And the first is called AI circle to search. Now, first you want to make sure that this feature is activated. So to check this, we're going to jump into the settings app here uh, and then scroll down to where we find display and then tap on navigation bar. There it is. And then we're going to make sure that circle to search is turned on. Now from here, we can basically highlight and search for anything that we have on our display. So for example, here, uh, I have a picture of this candle happens to be this candle right here. Uh, and what I can go ahead and do is press and hold on the navigation bar. And as you can see, we'll get this new overlay uh, on the display and we can just circle any object on the screen to instantly look that up. And as you can see, we'll then find purchase links as well as more photos of that specific item that you found in a photo. So for example, uh, let's say you're watching a video about a product on YouTube and you want to know oh, what product is that circle to find it even uh, for clothing items or ingredients on a cooking video, anything like that, or a plant, say you're outside, you find a new kind of plant or a bird or <laughs> anything. Uh, it's a really great way to circle literally anything on your phone It's not specific to photos. So for example, here in the lock screen or on the home screen matter, I can even circle an app to find out more about that app or what that may be. So really, there's no limits to this. And I actually found it to work uh, to work quite well. So this is a handy tool uh, built into your S24. Now I want to show you some AI photo editing features as uh, so some really powerful features on the S24. And these can work really well uh, in certain occasions. So let me give you an example here. So here I've got a photo of these cable carts. What I can do is tap on this little pencil icon. Uh, and then we can tap on this intelligence button. Now you'll see this button throughout the operating system, also in apps like your notes, voice memos, uh, and this will indicate the Samsung AI feature. So once we've tapped that, we can go ahead and select an object within the photo. So let's say I'm going to select this cable cart. You can see I did a very rough outline, but it actually does a very good job at identifying specifically what that, uh, where that cable cart starts and ends. I think it does a very good job. And then what I can do is press and hold, and this will allow me to then resize this object. I can then move the object or even remove it entirely. So if I press the erase button here and then tap generate, and then just wait a few seconds, as you can see, like magic, the cable cart has been erased. Uh, one of the things I really like is this is a very good example. I, I will say sometimes it doesn't work very well, but this here is a good example. And you can see that the sky looks very seamless. It doesn't look like anything is missing there. Uh, and plus, it actually remembered to or specifically chose to keep the cable. You can see that was actually part of the selection. But I think it realized that there shouldn't be a gap in that cable there. So it's actually continued that through resulting in, I think, a really good uh, example here. Now, again, this is not perfect. There will be times where it doesn't work very well. Well, uh, and since these are AI features, every attempt will be a little bit different. So if it doesn't work one time, trying it again sometimes can work very well. But for certain object removal or resize, say you got uh, people in the background of your uh, picture, uh, this works really quite well. Have you ever tried to pair your phone with another device or to find your phone in a list of Bluetooth devices or anything like that? Uh, and it's just labeled S24 or labeled some very generic name, making it hard to know which phone is yours. Well, a great way to solve this uh, is to change the name of your phone. So to do this, we can tap into settings and then we're going to go on the main screen of the settings page here, scroll down to where we find about this phone. And then we can tap on edit and this will allow us to change the name of the phone. So you can see I've set mine to Dion's S24. And if I'm trying to pair to this or anything like that, it will show up as Dion's S24. And so we'll make sure that you're not pairing to a wrong, to a, to an incorrect phone and easily be able to locate your phone in a group of other similarly named phones.
Now this next feature is really useful and something I recommend you do the moment you get your new phone, uh, if, whether you've just bought it from Samsung or especially if you've bought it used or if ever say your phone is not really functioning the way it should and that is to run a full device checkup. I really like that Samsung have included this here uh, as via their members app, which is an application that will come pre-installed on your phone. It will look like this. Uh, you can actually run a very thorough device checkup uh, right from your phone. So once you're in the app, we'll tap on support and then we can tap on phone diagnosis and as you can see, it's going to then very thoroughly run through every hardware uh, component of your phone. This will involve, uh, it will take a little bit of time, I'd say around 10 minutes or so, and uh, will involve you to give some input as well. So for example, it will play a sound from the ear speaker, you then have to confirm that you've heard that, or the vibration motor, or the torch, all these things. And as you can see, it's going to give a very thorough check of your phone, including things like your battery status, which I think is quite crucial. So this way, if your phone, again, is not really acting right, you can run this checkup to know if something is in fact broken or not not and whether it would need to be sent in for repairs and especially if you're buying a phone used you can run this through and make sure you're buying a good product and then if there are any issues you can negotiate a discount or walk away and that's it those are the first 10 things that you should do if you've just got your s24 if you want to see more tips and tricks like this be sure to check out my very full ultimate galaxy s24 guide video that is a longer video but i highly recommend you watch it as it's really going to cover everything you need to know about this fantastic phone thank you so much for watching guys if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this and i'll see you in the next video take care